Intel's Battle Mage was a huge improvement over Intel's last generation. But as it turns out, people still haven't really given Intel a chance yet. Even now, Intel Arc GPUs are completely absent from the Steam hardware survey as of February of this year, with literally the top 10 video cards being pretty much all NVIDIA cards. And looking at market share as of as recent as last year, we see that Intel held an all-time low of 0%, down from 1.33% from 2023 and 2022, with NVIDIA holding the dominant position of 90% and a AMD taking around 10%. Now of course, this might have changed since the launch of Battle Mage, and the pretty lacklustre stock at launch might have contributed to its no-show in the Steam hardware survey, but in today's video, I wanted to give Intel Arc a real chance, looking at the overall experience using their newest Arc B570, from installing drivers, the software experience, performance and ray tracing, and also the new XESS2 frame gen. We'll pair the B570 with the i5 12400F, which is more of an appropriate combination given the concerns about the driver overhead, which I will discuss throughout the video. But for those interested in a deeper technical analysis on driver overhead, there's a dedicated chapter at the end with charts and comparisons. So let's talk about it. Installing GPU drivers on Intel is about as simple as you might expect. Head to Intel's website for drivers and software and download the latest Arc and Iris XE driver for Windows. I must say their website is pretty clear on which driver to download, but make sure you don't waste time downloading the wrong one. Their drivers are larger than I expected though, being almost a gigabyte, but it's not actually far off of Nvidia's current driver sizes, which is around 850 megs. Installation itself is straightforward. Open the downloaded file, let it extract, and click begin installation. After that, Intel will ask Ask you if you would like to join the Intel Computing Improvement Program, which I would just choose to decline, and then you can customize the installation. Then hitting start will proceed with the installation, which only took a couple of minutes. And that's it. Hit reboot and then you'll be off to the races. Upon boot, you are greeted with Intel's new minimalistic graphics software, which like I've said in my previous videos, combines many of the elements from the previous crappy Arc control with the command center and a few other things. You have your homepage, which shows you at first glance if you're up to date and allows you to check for updates, control preferences and installation methods. And there's also a separate settings page accessible when you click on either your GPU or CPU to refer to hardware and software software specifications, notification preferences, and also support. Hitting profiles on the left hand side enables easy access to individual game profiles by searching for installed games or applications on your system. However, there is a catch. Unlike NVIDIA and AMD software, you cannot control in-game settings, only driver-related controls such as enabling Intel Smooth Sync or Smart Sync, FPS limiters, low latency, and also post-processing effects which are the most bare bones of settings. The graphics tab does allow you to change the global settings, which includes all the same settings that I just mentioned. The display tab is pretty self-explanatory, with all your usual controls like scaling methods, color depth and information, but there's not really anything else to talk about here, so let's move on. Over in the performance tab is a wall of metrics, which don't do much else other than, well, display the metrics of course, but they're only visible on this page, and Intel has removed their in-game overlay, so there's not really much use for them unless you're doing stress tests straight from the desktop, which is confusing because our control had this, so it's been removed. You'll need Intel Presentmon if you want to view your metrics in games or any other third party software, but it would be great if they can integrate Presentmon into this new software, but I digress. The tuning tab is a little more interesting. It allows you to control voltage and power limits and a simple frequency offset via the basic tab and a voltage frequency curve in the advanced tab in addition to a power limit slider. VRAM tuning is a little more basic however, with only a memory speed control in gigabits per second. And finally, you get dedicated fan controls with a simple target fan speed and temperature limit and an option for user controlled fan curves in the advanced tab, which is especially great because it also works on partner models and not just the Intel limited edition cards. And while well, that's about it for the software side of things, I must say it is easy to install drivers, only taking a couple 
couple of minutes to download and install, and the software is great for beginners. It's much improved over Arc Control, with most things being self-explanatory and easy to use, but it is missing a few features like I mentioned, such as the individual game setting overrides and optimization, nor is there any in-game overlay with metrics, which is something that Arc Control had going for it, not to mention the in-game video recording or screenshots. And the first game that I tried was good old CS2 at the high settings with 1080p, and it was an okay experience for the most part. I am using a 160Hz monitor, and we did occasionally get slightly above that, but we mostly got 142fps on average, with 1% lows of 63. There's no major lag spikes to speak of, but it wasn't perfect either with a few inconsistent moments, but this is a newer map that we're playing on, so it might have something to do with it, or maybe because we don't seem to be maxing out our GPU. Jumping to 1440p, still at high settings, and we still got around 120 FPS, with lows of 67, so it's still playable at 1440p. The game wasn't far off 1080p in terms of smoothness, but even at 1440p, we didn't seem to max out the GPU still. Considering the minimal impact on lows when moving to 1440p, it may suggest driver overhead, where the CPU is holding back the GPU in terms of how fast it manages and executes driver calls to the GPU, but it's fast enough to render the game's logic. To confirm this, I ran the game still at 1440p, but this time with low settings in a bit more of an optimized map or dust 2, resulting in averages of 162 with lows of 102. Our GPU utilization was much lower, around 50%, and the CPU would mostly hover around the 40% mark. Dropping the resolution to 1080p resulted in almost the same performance, which if this was a bottleneck would have resulted in more FPS. In this case, the CPU and the GPU utilization remains the same as 1440p. This clearly shows notable driver overhead at low resolutions, meaning your GPU is not fully utilized, which is something to remember if you are planning on pairing ARC with a budget CPU. That said, the game was smooth enough and there wasn't any pronounced lag spikes or major inconsistencies and playing this on a 160Hz monitor was a great experience for the most part. COD Black Ops 6 was also a great experience. I tried it at 1440p with the balance preset first, which also gave us an opportunity to try it XCSS, so I set that to balanced. We got 103 frames with lows of around 63, but discharging a large number of zombies at once were most likely the contender for that 63 low figure. The CPU usage increased, but it still wasn't near 100%, while the GPU utilization went from 100% to below 80%, which means that over overhead is still very much present even in this game at this resolution. Although it didn't seem to impact frame time consistency that much, only by a couple of milliseconds, as the game still felt pretty consistent above all. We can confirm this overhead is present by the mere increase in FPS dropping to 1080, going to 113 FPS on average with lows of 62. Overall, frame time consistency was still good given the circumstances and Intel's generational improvements with XC2 as well as the general driver improvements clearly made a difference as you can easily get a more than playable experience at 1440p. The experience on Horizon 5 was the most optimized so far. Going straight to 1440p on ultra settings with TAA, we averaged around 86 with 1% lows of 56. Drive overhead was never an issue here and it's a good showing for Arc as utilization remained at 100% pretty much all the time and frame time pacing to the eye was exceptional. Not to mention the game looked incredible. Jumping to extreme settings with XCSS set to quality, we still maintain an average of 76 with lows of 52, so it's safe to say that XSS is doing an excellent job at maintaining a frame rate way above 60 with extreme settings still at 1440p. This time though, there was the occasional stutter, but it's well within reason. Cyberpunk is also a good showing for ARC. At 1080p high preset, the B570 never breaks a sweat, achieving 92 FPS with lows of 72, which is the most consistent performance we've achieved today. Utilization remains at 100%, although our CPU does climb occasionally in utilization, but it has no impact on GPU performance, indicating minimal overhead. Jumping to 1440p, we still achieved above 60 FPS most of the time, with lows of around 53, and it remained a relatively consistent experience, 
if not more consistent at 1440p. So raw performance is clearly on top with the B570 and that 10 gigabytes of VRAM really helps it out here. The Ultra preset, still at 1440p with XSS set to quality, performance remains solid and image quality still holds up, even looking slightly sharper with, with XCSS. We got 74 FPS on average with lows of 61, so using XCSS is a must to push above 60 on higher graphical presets while not sacrificing much fidelity. Finally, setting the ray tracing medium preset with XCSS set to auto, we achieved 59 FPS, so just a tad below 60 with 50 and 1% lows, so it remains incredibly consistent even with ray tracing and higher resolutions. It's also relevant to point out our memory utilization still has some headroom and temperatures remain well within reason, so it's not like you're sacrificing thermals or acoustics for performance with ARC. Pushing the B570 even further, I ran F124 with the ray tracing 1440p at ultra high preset with TAA, and we achieved around 47 with lows of 34. When you consider the settings and resolution we're running at here, it's still a good showing in terms of performance on Intel ARC. Although we're approaching the limits of VRAM on this card when looking at the memory utilization. Setting XCSS to quality with the same settings allowed us to achieve an above 60 FPS experience with lows of 46, so a tad less consistent than what we saw in Cyberpunk, but still consistent none the wiser. Now I wanted to try the new XCSS 2 frame generation, so I enabled that with XCSS still set to quality. For whatever reason, Intel's overlay didn't represent the generated frames, but the figures we got at the end of the run were around 115 FPS on average with lows of 44. I'm not sure about the 1% low figures, I don't think that's what it was. It could be that Intel's overlay is not properly recording the frames, but the average frame rate clearly got an uplift and quite a large uplift at that. The game did feel a lot smoother with a clear and notable difference, and that 1% low figure didn't seem to align with the actual experience. And image quality in my opinion rivals Nvidia's frame generation. The real world impact of driver overhead varies across different games. In some, it might have a significant effect, while in others, it's pretty minimal. Overall, this results in an average performance decrease of around 4 to 5% at 1080 on both the 5600 and 12400 compared to the 9800X3D on the same B570 GPU. This brings performance below that of an RTX 3060 12 gig in some scenarios, but at 1440, the situation changes. On the 12400, performance drops by around 30%, but the 5600 actually gains a slight advantage. Ray tracing performance remains unaffected or even slightly improved, as we observe slightly higher averages in some cases. Overall, Intel Arc is significantly improved, with solid gaming performance, excellent software usability, and meaningful features like the new XCSS to a frame generation. Driver overhead remains a factor, especially on low-end CPUs or lower resolutions, but it is minimized at 1440p, so keep that in mind. Anyways guys, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed that deep dive on the Intel Arc experience in 2025. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell and do all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.